All right, so I tried to uh, do a guide for this guy from 1 to 16. I don't know if it was my hard drive or what, but the, most of the recordings had so many errors in them. I just gave up trying to edit it out, and I'm just going to do a new guy because I've been stuck in Tier 1 for about two months. Just rolling Tier 1 guys until they do something with Endgame here. Um, so as you can see, I have quite a few Shaman. This is just one account. I have two other accounts as well. Um, I might even have a shaman over here. There we go. A level 40 guy. Um, so basically all I've been playing lately. So someone in, uh, PM asked me if I would, uh, tell him how to play. And I'm like, I'm not fucking doing that. But I will show you, because it's far easier, uh, than typing it all out. So we're going to roll a new shaman. I'm actually out of slots, but I have this guy over here and that I've done two scenarios on. One on both, maybe three. Um, and I think after the first scenario, you'll be like level three. So you're on wins, you're going to get maybe three quarters of a level per scenario. Maybe half. And, uh, yeah, so he's basically brand new. Now, he is an inevitable city, but I can get him back too. And I've sent him a bunch of shit from those other shaman just because I'm not going to farm it again. So some of it won't be as accurate if you roll a new shaman. Like, you won't be able to, uh, you know, have the money that he has. Now, money isn't terribly hard to get if you win scenarios. I think you get 20 silver every time. And I got another black guard guide that shows that. So to get to IC very quickly, what I did was I bound War Report here. On, this is custom map. I think the other map um, doesn't have the button, and you'll have to actually bind it. So go to key mapping, windows, it's near the bottom, war report window. I bound it to shift tilde. So if I hit that, it pulls up war report. And <clears throat> I don't even know if I went to a tier one. Like you can go to any tier, use this little arrow. Um, and it's usually going to put you at a war camp. Now you got to, as a new player, you might want to be familiar with where the hell you're going to land. So that sucks. Because if you go to keep attack southern garrison in Prague, it's going to put you in a chapter, not the war camp. So this is Southern Garrison. It's going to put you right here, which is the closest point to that. The war camp's here. You'd have to ride north in the road a little bit. And there's potential to be like a level 35 mob there that one-shots you. So I would probably stick with Tier 1 or 2. Probably Tier 1. But um, Lookout Tower and Mount Bloodhorn. Where's that? Mount Bloodhorn, Lookout Tower right next to the war camp. So if we flew there and hit go, it's going to take me to the war camp. Now, if it's at Ekrand, there's no war camp in Ekrand. There are battle objectives for the, the lake, but we do not want to port to those because it'll put us somewhere we don't want to be. But to get to IC, if you go to a war camp, every war camp is a flight guy right over here, and it costs like 50 copper to go to IC. So I got the IC quick, and the reason I went there is to turn in the scenario quest that I won. But let's say we started brand new. Alright, so if I type stuck twice, it is going to take me to the starting area. If you type it once, I think it takes you to your bind point. But if you do it two times in a row, like two times in five seconds, you start the game, you're going to start right here. It's not going to look like this. You're going to have to set up your profile appropriately. Um, just quickly, some add-ons that I use. I use mouse over target. Uh, this is pure. These different look on my health bar. Um, we got enemy down here that lets me mark people. Okay, so I'm holding my push to talk. That fucked everything up. All right, so we see some errors in real time there. But uh, enemy is really good. Like if I mark this guy, say I really want to heal him. Well, G's going to default the guard. So. If I guard someone, it's going to put a G on them usually. But let's say I make them pink. I usually like to make like the group leader pink or something. And I can see him through obstacles. I can see him through terrain up to a certain distance. So I like to mark people um, just to uh, see them. You can mark enemies too. So if the guy's hiding on the other side of this hill, I can I know he's there. I'll see him move back and forth. So when you start out, there's a couple quests here. Um, I think this guy has one to talk to this guy, so I did that one, then did a couple scenarios. Then flew to IC. I might have done the one down the hill here, too. So there's one to kill a couple guys. Everything in Tier 1, at least in the early levels, you can just kill with a single dot. 
Um, the barrels are on the beach. That's another quest. Um, and then there's a quest at this little hut, the lava hill, that shoots you up uh, on this, like, dam or whatever this is. Whatever this gate is. And that's where you can get a free trophy at level one. Of course, you can barely see it because you're a goblin, so you're tiny. And it is, uh, here, we'll move it. We can see where... I think you could put it on your chest. Oh, there it is, on my hip. So it's like a bag of mushrooms, or a little tie of mushrooms, which, I mean, only you're gonna see. Or if you stay in IC and people walk up to you, maybe they'll see it, but... Um, later on people ask how to get trophies. There's always a free one at your, at your, like, level one starting area. Alright, so we already used War Report. And there is a 20 minute cooldown, right? So I can't do it again. But normally when I start out, I would do these first couple of quests and then I would war report the hell out of here. And I would also queue up. Now I'm using QCure to do them all, but let's say you don't have QCure, the add-on. Click the little um, icon here, hit join all. And now we are queued. The benefit of QCure is um, if you forget to hit join in the first minute, it will automatically tell hit the button that says like, give me a minute. Which you can do manually, you can say give me a minute, and you get actually like a minute and a half to join a scenario. But QQ will do it for you, and it lets you blacklist scenarios and stuff. Say you really hated one of these, like I uh, say I really hated Logger's Forge. Alright, well you can set up QQ to never queue that. I suggest not doing any of that, because you will straight up miss Logger's Forge when everyone else is playing it. And it's more detrimental to not play it than play it. Alright, so I did that quest, turned it in. Probably took a couple, or before I turned it in, I took a couple scenarios and got the hell out of here. Now, I'm not going to do these other ones because uh, I'm already way above their level. Let's abandon it. Yeah, let's find this bridge over here. So, Chapter 2 is the nearest place you can fly out if you war report uh, has a cooldown for some reason. Say you flew somewhere and then you double stuck for some reason. And you went back to Chapter 1. Uh, go over to chapter two here. And he has the first flight master. He also has the crafting, um, the first crafting stuff we can do. And I suggest you do cultivating and apothecary. You probably won't get anything out of it until about level 15, 16, when you get near 200, but, uh, it's free money after that. All right, so let's take the scenario. We'll come back right here. Now when you start, I think you have uh, the one second heal that has a little bit of heal over time tagged on the end of it, a dot, and a direct damage, and you'll slowly get more abilities. I mean, you're really useless at level one, just because you only have those three abilities. As you get the second heal, which is a quit bleed, and you'll become much more effective. All right, so we're already winning, we're in middle. I got in late. You could have seen that on the uh, loading page that some of the objectives were already captured. Coming in late, maybe I want to see if anyone's running across the beach, and if they are, I'll just stand on the flag and heal myself. I don't have detaunt yet, because you don't get that, I think, till level 7. But once you have detaunt, you're kind of unkillable as well. So I could just stand on that flag and tank a DPS or a, two tanks, or maybe even two DPS, as long as I kept detaunt up. If they're on the bridge. He's trying to steal that kill. Alright. So we have two, uh... I think my little window's broken. I think I'm overlapping another group. Because I see two zealots. So we'll fix that when I'm out here. We'll just do a little DPS. And apologies on the uh, lack of audio in game. It was picking up uh, some YouTube music earlier and I just turned it all off. Just have it uh, mic only. Stupid Iron Breaker can't do anything. One handed tank ain't gonna do much in tier one. 
give this uh, witch hunter the dipsy doodle. It's uh, pretty easy to live as long as you keep moving. Nice try, bud. All right, so my little window is jacked. I have to. I have like overlapping group, or overlapping group windows. Here is my window. Here's the other window. I want them kind of parallel. Let's move it up a little. I'm not really playing right now, but that's okay. All right, so like the next group will be here. I think that actually, let's put these guys up here. My group's separated per the settings. I think group one's here, group two's here, group three's here, and my group's down here. All right, we're good. I want to see everybody. I'm looking mostly in this middle part of the screen anyways. This is on a 4K monitor, a 40-inch 4K monitor, TV. So I'm only looking peripheral over here. So I apologize in the clutter if you're looking at this on a smaller screen. So I'm sniping kills with my beam because that's instant. That damage was from artillery inside the uh, spawn. So they took this. We're going to go back. Maybe we'll take middle. Maybe this guy will stop. This is going to be a free free win, free kills. All right, he's getting attacked with something. And that is a uh, enemy warband windows, by the way. That makes it easy to see him getting hit. That's better than the default one. Oh, no. And my guy's basically naked right now. I think I got all level one stuff. These, these might be from the first quest you do. Which have no armor value and basically no resist. And if they got gear on, tier one tanks can do quite a bit of damage. Switch to a healer with no detail. All right, so we're going to uh, get jumped by this witch hunter here. Or maybe it looks like he might be going for the zealot. So we want to do a little bit of damage on him, but we got to make sure we don't let that zealot die because we don't have res. We don't get that ability until level 10. Uh, once you have the res ability, uh, your value goes up immensely because then people don't have to run back. And you can usually keep fights equal or better numbers on the other side where they aren't resing or they're releasing. So one easy way to play tier one healer, if you're just starting out, is literally to just hot everybody that's in range. So this, if I click them, it looks like they're out of range. But if they're out of range by default, they will look like this. They're like grayed out. If I click somewhere else on the screen, they're all in range. I might not have line of sight. Or they're all relatively in range. Maybe they're not 100 feet away, but they're all like 200 feet away. If they get like on the other side of the map, they will gray out. So just click through people and hot them just hot everybody you will probably have close to top heels doing that if that's all you did um then you'll be pretty effective i mean basically if everyone has regenerating health your team's gonna be pretty strong so if you're just starting out and you're who do i heal what do i heal when do i heal just hot everybody just click through the lists of names and um put a heal over time on them and if they have low health then use the other one as well gork will fix it but um, pretty straightforward to play a tier one healer. And as we get gear, we're basically going to become unkillable. So let's go get Apothecary and Cultivating. And that gave me, what, like a third of a level? Almost half. All right, I think the guys are over here. Just 
All right, we learned apothecary. The cultivators over here in a hut. Toothless something. So it's a talisman guy, merchant. Oh, here he is. All right, we do need to go to the craft supply merchant, who I believe is also here. Maybe the regular merchant has it too. Let's check them. We gotta buy some seeds. No, this guy just has a level four white stuff. We could buy this, but we're really close to seven, and that's when I'll buy the first set of stuff that I'll even worry about putting um cheapo talismans in. So that win that I just got would be worth um twenty silver if I went and turned it in. And I'm looking for the merchant. All right, merchant. Craft supply merchant. Merchant. His name is uh, Nugget. And I have no idea where he is here. It's gonna be. Oh, he's right in front of me. Jesus. All right, here we go. So we gotta buy a couple seeds. I would go with just like restoration. You can always use those. Um, they show up in your craft bag. Buy a couple. If you're going DPS, maybe do uh intelligence. Do not do willpower. Um. The other ones are kind of fun, but you're not going to be able to sell them as well. Like, I don't know if it's Flame Breath. Maybe one of these isn't in the game. Uh, Maltop isn't in the game. Um, flame Breath might be... Uh, this is AP Pot. Instant Heal. We're going to use a, We're gonna use our extra emblems to get those anyways. Uh, what else? Ballistic. Don't do that unless you're a Squig Herder. Um, you don't need to use this. We'll buy better seeds later on. Napalm works, but again, it's kind of niche. Um, so just go with uh, these uh, elvish parsley seeds. And you only need a couple. So I got three, which means I hope I don't fail three times in a row. And my um, Miracle Grow add-on is going to be what I use to uh, do this. Now, it's not showing up. It should be down here. So what I'm going to do is type Ariel. Or slash REL, that's reload. It reloads the UI. Because normally it's down here. Let's see where I put it. Layout editor. So it still didn't show up, so I'm going to hide it. Save. Layout editor. Start editing. Show. Save again. And there it is. Now it's working. So I click over on this left side, you select the seed you want to do, and until we get to level 50, we can only do one at a time. Um, <clears throat> what it's going to happen is, I guess we'll see in a minute, it's going to give me a plant, and I can control right-click that plant and turn it back into seeds. So seeds always, not always, but most of the time they will give you a plant or multiple plants, and you can turn those back into seeds, and you just keep going eventually this level one seed will give me a level 25 plant which i turn back into a level 25 seed and that's how you get to the next tier so we're just going to grow these kind of non-stop don't pay too much attention as far as what you get just make sure you're always growing stuff or at least try to always grow stuff and you can do it in the middle of a fight or like a keep siege or anything middle of this scenario i should be clicking it when i have a chance so just kind of it's on autopilot um the only thing you really actually have to do is go into your craft bag every now and then, hold down control, and then um, right-click the plants to turn them back into seeds every now and then. All right, as far as abilities, I think I mentioned those earlier. We have our uh, instant heal, our hot. This is not super useful until later in the game when you're solo roaming. Um, this is our direct damage, our damage over time, and our channel beam. And then over here I have uh, on Q an absorb shield. I also gave myself some some uh, treats here, so let's uh, pop any of these I can. I mean, intelligence is better than nothing. I gotta fix my UI here too. Some of this stuff shouldn't be up in the corner. I have all these profiles. I couldn't remember which one I used. I, I, I prefer to go with these three bars and then come to my quick stuff over here. Oop, I was a little slow.
All right, let's talk in more plan. We should be fine. Someone's attacking me over here. Engineer shoot me or something. So if you're getting attacked on the left there, just run away and go to the other side. Make him uh, get into range to keep doing it. And generally they won't chase that far. Keep the hots and the guy in the other group. All your DPS are going to be the priority heal targets because they're going to die the quickest. You still have to heal the tanks so they take damage, but you get a little bit of a buffer before you have to throw something on them. But the uh, Sork, you're not going to get much warning before they go from 100 to 0. Yeah, it likes to go deep. That's fine. I mean, that's probably the the worst thing that can happen with a tank is they go way too deep and then uh they're out of range of your heal, so you got to charge forward. And by the time you get forward to heal them, you know they die because you don't really you, you're expecting that you get that little window. So our uh, team let them take metal. We're not take, doing anything with this iron break. I mean, I'm kind of at fault here to blame too, but uh, if you don't stand on the objective, you don't cap it, and you don't stop them from capping it. Definitely lost the scenario too, because me or someone else were too dumb to just stand on the objective uh, at a timely manner, and we let them cap or whatever. And it was, you know, the five points they needed to win, or ten or whatever. Listen, I mean, most scenarios are like capture the middle, then figure it out from there. And if you stick with the group, you'll be okay. As a shaman, you can DPS a little bit. You really don't have to. You might even use more AP, and then you won't have enough to heal. So should we do is over on the right getting a tank, but there's two other people with them. There's neither of those people as a healer, so let's try and get down in here. Maybe I can toss my hot. All right, he did have a healer over there, but wasn't healing anybody except himself. Now, if they concentrate fire on this uh, witch elf, I'm probably not going to be able to keep him up. Maybe a lucky bubble, or if they stop for some reason. Yeah, so they spiked him, but they uh, stopped, and he got out of melee range of whoever's hitting him. They got focus fire on a tank up there, which is usually the worst strategy you could possibly employ. Um, sometimes he's the only guy there to attack, so some people hit him no matter what, but um, generally you don't want to attack tanks. I mean, I've certainly done it on a witch hunter or whatever, trying to build up accusations. Um, done it on an iron breaker trying to build up grudges, whatever, but if there's a softer target near that guy, that's who they should be attacking, so I'm just waiting to see if they swap. So he kind of took himself out of line of sight there, <clears throat> but... I could tell he grayed out. I couldn't see him. All 
as a tank, that's kind of what you want to do. You want to get in there, you want to fight, be within range of the heals, pray that you get a hot or something. Don't overextend all the way to the spawn. Um, I mean, eventually you can, but don't do it right away. Just kind of get in there, um, be annoying on a healer. Alright, so held the middle, group went over, capped the side, pretty easy win. And even, you know, naked, it's pretty easy to top heals in tier 1 if you just pay attention. Like, let's see, level 15, he doesn't use his absorb shield ability at all, otherwise he would have gave protection. So that guy's like playing without one of his key abilities. So, so to use that ability, I mean, you can obviously just spam it whenever it's up, but it, if you use it more of an instant heal, or an instant buffer in this case, like that uh, witch elf was running away and he got really low, but I put the shield on him, which does the same thing as an instant heal. You know, it gives him an extra 400 hit points before he dies. All right, so chapter two, the flight guy is the first one you'll see. I would go to Nordland, which is the most popular tier one zone, and we'll just bind here. There's also a uh, armor merchant that'll sell us level seven stuff. Now, if we want to get talismans to put in the level seven stuff, we're gonna have to fly to IC turn in our quests, use some of that silver to buy. Um, these level 4 armor green, um, it's the smith suffix there. If you just search level 4 smith, you're going to find these. These are very cheap, and you, you don't really need much more than that early on. So we just flew here, the uh, bind guys over here on the other side of this tower. Uh, rally master. So set your rally point here. Now you can use your book to get back here whenever you need to. I mean, it has an hour cooldown. It used to have no cooldown, which was awesome. And then they added an hour cooldown. Or it had the hour cooldown, it just didn't enforce it. So we got some loot from that scenario. Uh, we are level 7. Let's Q. Hopefully I can buy some armor. So this this is right next to chapter 3, which sells level 7 white armor. So we're going to go over here and buy some. So we're going to buy the robe, the shoulders, the gloves, the boots, and we will buy a staff back at the war camp. Now there are set items you can get. So I've been winning scenarios, I've been getting these tokens. I can buy a set with that, but it's going to be... If you're a healer, it's going to be plus intelligence, which you don't really need. Um, and if you do the open RVR and get medallions, it's going to be plus willpower, which you don't really need. So I would buy this white stuff and stick with this, because it has way more resist than you're going to find. So let's slot this, and I'll show you. I must add a couple of the blues, but the blue literally has three more armor than the greens, or maybe it's nine. It's not a ton more. We're going to buy four toughness chains. And for now, we are going to buy the Toughness Wound Staff. Alright, we'll equip this in the scenario. Now, the set armors aren't bad for DPS classes. They're not terrible for tanks. I just think early on, the armor difference, um, I think they are. They show up as like a gold item. So you might think that they're super rare. But the gold item just means it's part of a set. It has its own rarity uh, underneath. And it is either a white or a green item anyways. So it's not like gold is always the best. So let's take the quest. Just put these four chains on. I did get a resistance buff I'll need to cast when I get in here. Alright, just upgraded my staff. More armor. You can put armor talismans in your staff. So we're close enough. Give them all resists. I got my detente. Let's move that over. Let's 
Always remember, F1 is targeting yourself, so you're going to hit that button quite a bit. If he detaunted either of those DPS, I think he would have lived. Really hope this blackguard falls back. So with all this armor, those guys, those, that witch hunter and that slayer, don't do too much damage to me. No, normally I'd save my AP. I wouldn't be doing too much DPS, but I can clearly see this player isn't getting heals. So my dot could kill him if he doesn't get any more heals, and if anything, it will help our team. Nog's on the other side. Ran the wrong way. I mean, small time uh, fighting like this, you gotta stick together. We want to get to him. I'm just run through these guys. Fucking moron ran away. All right, that may cost us if uh, we have some deaths back here. My hope was that I'd drag at least a DPS with me that I could detaunt and just, you know, take out of the fight. There's one. I'm going to blame that on the Squiggy. Or it could be on me for trying to save the Squiggy. All right, once I see he's committed, I quickly detone him. So we'll hide right here. All right, you can bring the thing back a little bit, but I don't think you can be back here very long before it just despawns and goes back to the middle. Um, I think if you go down the stairs like he is, it will uh, set like a timer, and you got like two seconds to get back on the stairs. I think you already lost it. This guy's still running around like a fucking chicken with his head cut off. Just run towards your team, buddy. And I don't mind people far away. But I have to just jog a little bit to th toss a heal in. But you gotta stay within line of fucking sight. And you certainly can't keep running away when shit goes south. You gotta, like, come back. It's just costing other people in the team their lives at this point, trying to keep them up. And unfortunately, uh, you usually have to keep your DPS up first because they have to kill everything. And your tank... Um, Although they can be very annoying and useful to keep up, they're the most expendable. Thought we could take them out of line of sight and then kill them. Well, perfect scenario. They chase the white line up the ramp, see the room priest on the left, and just beeline towards them. So our DPS has been running around doing nothing. I mean, he's been running from people, but that hasn't helped us kill anything. And I'm talking about the Squiggy, not the Chop and the other group. I let that Chop it. When they hold the, uh, the thing, the glowing beam above their head, it eventually kills them, and it increases over time. And it would probably take a dedicated healer to keep them up. And even then, and he'll eventually die. Make sure I detail the right guy. All right, I'm doing a terrible job keeping track of that other group because they came in late. Yeah, gonna get it on him. 
I'm really only concerned about this black orb. But Deton and this guy can't touch me. Those big chunks of damage he's taking are from the the beam, the glowing beam above his head, not the order. And I can't resonate. Nice little fight. Did not see those auto-group guys. Here comes the two DPS. They're chasing that zealot and a respawn of a uh, AM. I'm gonna get the orc. Oh, he's dead. This is a decent fight. I cannot see this fucking other group though. I'm gonna bring them in. I'm gonna move all my guys around here. Let's move my group closer, this group closer. Monitor's so big, and I'm sitting close enough that that's all in my peripheral vision when it's that up in the corner. And realistically, that chop is probably our best chance of winning because. You know, he's not running off on the other side of the map. So slow to cast. Sorry, bud. Damn, I think they beat us. Yeah, they did. Can to get the thing back? All right, decent heals. Got a kill somehow. At level 14, I literally don't know what this guy was doing. Dying, maybe. All my little windows are busted here. All right, and uh, of course I wasn't growing anything. So the fights are good. You're probably going to forget to use Miracle Grow. But when they slow down, you can regrow stuff. I don't know if I had some failures there or what. And the seeds. I only got one left. So, I mean, like, you can fail the first three seeds, which is annoying. But usually, we'll have success here, and then we'll be able to, uh, start getting our chain of plants going. Alright, so we had, by far, top heals, no deaths. Let a couple guys die that I shouldn't have. Case this Quiggy that I shouldn't have wasted my time with. Might have cost us the game, as far as I know. The other two shaman were basically non-factors. If they, if you're in there and you don't do anything, just be aware that the other team also gets a player to equal you. And then uh, if that player does something and you don't do anything, it's basically giving the other team a huge advantage. You don't have to be amazing in there, but you can't be a non-factor. I mean, I think that one shaman had less than like 15,000 healing and damage combined. Like, do something. If all you want to do is DPS, then fine. DPS, but... uh. Don't not DPS. <laughs> so, um, here's the set armor I was talking about. I don't get this stuff at all. I mean, plus intelligence. I'm going to be a healer on this guy for now. Useless for me. Um, if you look at it head to head, I mean, it's clearly a, a level above. I think it's equivalent to a green. If we broke it, if we bought this and salvaged it, it is a green rarity item. But it has no resistance. So, e I mean, it has 20 more armor, base. I could put an armor talisman in it, but I would lose 60 resistance. Same with the boots. They're only 12 more. They have no resistance. 
And resist capped out means uh, any magical damage you take is going to be heavily reduced. And then slotting it with armor means any physical damage I take will be heavily reduced. And the open RVR set has um, willpower on it. I don't want willpower on this guy. Um, from the standpoint of I'm not stacking it. Like it's return on investment is very low for a healer. Maybe for Zealot and Rune Priest is the only time you can slot something with willpower and see that your heals go up. Alright, I still gotta move these around too. Well, this center already started without me. Okay. Can't use your horse here. So sprint. Alright, here's my plant. No fails. There we go. Two plant. So then go on your back. Two seeds. And then we regrow. And hopefully we get a some better luck and we don't have to uh go buy seeds or something. That'd be miserable. Hey, buddy. Right around the corner. So this guy's basically taking himself out of the fight by continuing to attack me after being detaunted. I can still heal. I mean, if my team was here, so he's just a black orc. Oh, he took himself out of line of sight. Then a bunch of guys in the uh, warband thing show that they're like in range because they're above me. Let me detail more off. Uh, but I can't heal them because they are not in my line of sight. They're like through the floor. So it looks like that guy lost confidence. He could kill me before the, the boys showed up from behind. Choppas die so quick once they're enraged. And oddly, this pet is probably a third of his damage in tier 1, so... It is worth killing if it's just laying around. Is there anyone in this fucking room? Try and drag him down the ramp a little bit. And then push back up. Healing from the back, not the front. That was a good punt. I don't think this kills you anymore. That was a M1 punt from the engineer. I mean, it resets you. It doesn't kill you. I knew I was close to the edge. I didn't know how close. Well, that basically took me out of the fight, you know, for 40 seconds or so. So not a bad play. I'm not even certain how this entire scenario works. I know you got to capture this part, the second floor, and then the top. I know you can lose points crazy quick if you don't cap the top. But sometimes this shit blows up, sometimes it doesn't. I, I have fucking no idea. Oh, there's the Marauder. You can ninja cap this thing in the middle pretty quick, too. It only takes like three or five seconds to capture, and it's huge. So you can hide on the other side of it and do it. Oh, I thought I hit leave before dying. Fucking no one trying to camp bottom. I don't know what they were doing. I mean, I'm not 100% certain how that scenario works, but I know you can't win without taking the bottom. That scenario is fun sometimes. Sometimes it's just complete ass. Let's harvest our plant. Did we win? Oh, look, we got the 25. So, of course, I can't control alt click. So, I got my, I'm using alt as my push to talk. So, I can't let me, uh. All right. So, I broke down the plant that was a 25. And now I'm not even close to being level 25 yet on Apothecary. And check it here. I'm at five. But I already have a level 25 seed from that crit. So, that's the 
probably the biggest pain in the ass of cultivating is like if you don't get that 25 plant you got to keep growing level ones but it gets easier when you hit 50 and you get two slots and 100 you get three slots so just keep growing shit all right so i can also when i find time here go back to um inevitable city and buy a second talisman for my staff i only have one in there you can't do two of the same so i gotta get like a toughness which might be harder to find toughness initiative wounds the things i want to put in there all come from salvaging not scavenging and a lot of new players will pick up scavenging so they make cheapo talismans and put them up relatively cheap but not the ones i want to buy when i logged down earlier there's like a thousand players on the server and i think a quarter of them were in tier one there's so many people that just play tier one now i mean there's still 750 that are playing the other ones but of the 750 playing the other ones maybe half are actually doing something rvr related the other half are pve in farming pots or i don't know what the fuck they're doing half might be generous of the rest of the population there's good RVR to be had in tier four. It's just the uh, the finale is so anticlimactic. The uh, city siege and everything it just like burns people out, and um, some people are just waiting around to get burned out. You know, they're they're only gonna actually participate in the city. They don't even do the rest of it. So it's kind of a shame. So we let the park. This engineer is a boner. For See you, buddy. I think he's trying to give me the old blunderbuss to the face. Alright, so this should be your, your standard healing strategy. Stay at the back, within range of people that are in the front line if you can. I mean, if they overextend, I mean, you're going to have to push in a little. Get ready to detaunt anyone that kind of bum rushes towards you or beelines towards you, jumps out of stealth, whatever. Um, they might know that you're the best healer, but there's a lot of people that will not risk running through your entire team to get to you, to stop you, so, as long as you're at the back. But as we're cleaning them up here, I'm going to run forward and uh, add some damage to this. We're clearly winning this fight, so uh, there's no real risk about being closer to the front here. Hey, it's my engineer. Also, if you click on the detente and uh, you're near the middle here, you might actually be a decent distraction for a DPS in their team. Kind of waste their time trying to kill you. Um, so if, if you're good at detaunting, I would play a little bit closer. But for new players, just hang out the back, man. And if you uh, get jumped back there by a witch hunter, sprint towards all your buddies. Don't run back towards the spawn. And one of the reasons you might want to play more middle, besides being uh, quick on your detente, is eventually you're going to have to res people that pushed in backline, uh, which you generally can't do from your own backline. You're, you're probably a couple hundred feet apart, and res is only a hundred feet total. So if you're at the middle, you can sometimes reach near where the tank or DPS, whoever it is, died. If you got a guy running in there, like one on six, one on ten, whatever, who stands no chance of living. Um, you can res them back to your group, and it's kind of like a summon, you know, you're like hooking them back, and uh, maybe they get the idea that they shouldn't run in there by themselves. But you're going to want to be really quick. You're going to watch their hit points just fall, and instead of trying to heal them, just get ready to res them as quick as possible. Don't waste your time keeping them up for an extra half second with a heal. So I should stay here and heal, because I'm probably the strongest healer here. But I have to kind of fall back with a part, too. These guys should help the part not get intercept well there's the interception it's a iron breaker I mean, I hope more than one person turned and went with that guy. Especially if you come from the spawn and the part's riding past you, just fucking escort it. You're right there already.
This guy no health. Got a noob. I think he's a melee doc, so you know, he gets low health. He thinks to himself, I have to sprint towards this guy and life tap him or I'm dead. But the reality is he just fucking ran away from the heels. I'll lure this guy in, kill him. I'll cry for you, buddy. So that little fight, you know, started off four and four, five and five, whatever it was. I want to dot everybody because every little bit of damage counts and then maximize my distance between me and their DPS. If they want to chase me, that's fine because the black whore can sit on their healer. Was the guy that was putting his fucking lion on me in that other scenario? <laughs> Dirty lion. I mean, their best bet, they can't push middle, is to intercept the bigger force. I mean, realistically, if they're on you, if you, you the kiting failed. You gotta hit your fucking Deton on a Sork. I, I am as guilty as anyone of not using it, but um, once they close the gap and they start whacking your ass, you gotta Deton. Now there are some classes where you have like an AoE Deton, like a Marauder, um, and the damage it can cut down when you're getting focus is insane, so not using it is uh, signing a death sentence sometimes. And so there's a lot of classes that have Detaunt that don't use them and should, um, but Sork definitely. If you're if you're getting meleeed by like a Slayer or a Witch Hunter, you just fucking hit it. And the Choppa, you often see them never use their Detaunt, and they always forget that the Rage Dump abilities that cut your Rage from max to nothing are more or less a second Detaunt because while you're enraged, you take extra damage. So dumping that is like the same as Detaunting. I don't know why it shows him out of range there. He's clearly right in front of me, but um, sometimes enemy bugs out. They're gonna get the part. Range snare from like a sork is huge, uh, and you don't have melee right on top of them. Also, a uh, witch off throw dagger it has a snare to it if it hits him in the back. Now, all this melee that just killed that witch hunter, they should have ignored him and run right past, like swing at him as you're running past. But more or less, just ignore that fucking guy and sprint, do whatever you gotta do to get up to that part. Um, the witch hunter is just going to have to die from, you know, auxiliary damage, dots, whatever healers are hitting him. And he can't kill anybody if we hit detaunt. And a big thing you're going to see team struggle with, doesn't matter which side you play, is reorganizing. Like once that rune priest gets away from us, and it's clear he's going to cap. Don't chase him all the way to the fucking spawn. Come back to this where, where it respawns. Gather up. Get ready to grab it as a team. Run it. Maybe as a team. Um, you could technically run it as a team, just like Order did. Then you could cut across and intercept them. Like, that's what they should be doing. Instead of coming here, these guys that just came up here, they should have, uh, grouped up with the part and then cut us off. Now, as a healer, you're not always in the best position just to run off and leave, you know, six or seven or eight of your guys fighting here. They could all die without heals. So you're kind of glued to them and their bad decisions. That you can always uh, kind of influence them, you know, by screaming at them in chat, telling them they're fucking idiots, whatever you gotta do. Um, sometimes it works, sometimes it's a bad strategy, but if it's consistent, like if they keep doing the wrong thing, I would just be like, hey, I'm running the part. You know, you're not getting heals if you stay there. And people that read it, they will uh, get the idea. Um, but my strategy here is I'm just gonna stay with the team. Bad decisions, good decisions, whatever. Because they will lose without my heels.
Now, if Order was doing a really, really good job of cutting that part off, killing it, and then running it, you know, cutting across up at the beach, I would just bail on these guys, let them die, because they're better off respawning near the boat at that point than staying down here and not doing anything. But, it, you know, we're doing okay running it. Of course, the second I say that, the part has been dropped because they, they must have got them. So I think they're finally intercepting the part. Yeah, there we go. They killed it a while ago, but they must have struggled to pick it up. If you're taking damage, it'll interrupt the pickup uh, cast. Now, I knew that Witch Hunter would jump out, or someone, besides an Iron Breaker. So I'm sa I was saving my uh, detente for something that was a little more serious. So I dinged and I didn't get my um, hit points from the level. I don't have bolster anymore. That makes my, uh, or this witch hunter quite a bit more dangerous and my heals quite a bit shittier. Uh, I lost line of sight in this. Uh, is my bolster gonna fix here? Maybe when I respawn, it'll come back. That is a big no. Yeah, so this is a uh, level 8 hit points. This isn't level 15, which I should be bolstered to. Well, I can still heal a little bit, but I'm going to be very ineffective. Um, mostly tanking damage I'm going to have zero ability to do. Don't cap it. Cap it on the back. Honest line of sight, you moron. Basically, I'm half as useful as I was before I leveled. Damage is half. Everything's half. Yeah, they're doing seven. He yeah, won me again. There we go. Eight kills. Not too bad. It's a fun one. When I hit level 8, my bolster put me at 11. Or no, I was at like 1200 hit points, right? So here's what I should have been. Let's run into the uh, RVR lake. So I should have been at this, which I wouldn't have died had I had that. But it's very easy to spike down a thousand hit points before someone can heal themselves. But once I start healing myself, can't do anything. I don't even know it's worth getting into your one. You could heal crit next. This might be the weekend scenario. So this is worth double XP. Now, you could only queue the weekend scenario, but, um, yet I would have missed all those other scenarios. So, in tier two, you're generally okay just queue and weekend scenario, and other people will queue just that as well. 
No, I don't know if the third group would go here or down here. I kind of want to see them off in my peripheral vision here. It's really interesting how bolster's broken. Lasting bracing, 280 armor buff. But I don't have a 280 armor buff potion. I used this level 5 one, and I got this buff. That could just be a visual bug. I don't really know. So when you're up here, if you hit tab, you will see people running up the stairs if they try and backdoor cap. Also, this must have started way late. I wasn't paying attention. Oh, gee. Oh, I have big heal now. They got a lot of fucking people. Oh, look. We're coming behind them. I should have big healed that black horn after I stabilized him for a second. I'll big heal this marauder. We'll see what it does. Yeah, not bad. 25. Jesus, I was so focused on killing that AM quick. I'll let that black orc just get slaughtered in my group. My only guy I'm responsible for. There we go, big hill. I'm gonna click the maggot. I don't know why they're fighting down here. The Chosen must have been chasing someone off the back way here. Either back towards their spawn or he ran up or he killed them. I keep forgetting that bottom left group has zero healer. And we got to pay more attention here. Oh, daggers at me. So there must have been a patch or something in my game that patch 100% because this guy's punching me instead of using that giant sword on his back. I mean, he is hitting me with the sword. It just looks like he's punching me. This knight basically took himself out of the fight. Because I am still healing everybody. Oh, he's up in there's fucking thing. I can't get. Th All right, a little more interesting because Deton in that night does nothing, but now I'm gonna work the Deton on this white line. Oh, that hot hit him right as he died. Just fucking went too far over the edge. I 
I'm guessing this Magus is above me, which is why he's out of line of sight when I click him. But it looks like he's close on the uh, enemy warband. Probably gave up. We well, ran way back. To Sorry, buddy. If you never jump down, I'm never going to get line of sight on you from under here. I mean, I could charge up there and get that overshot, but I also don't want to drag like that knight up there um, who might ignore me and then go cap, and I'm not going to go sit on the cap if he does that. I'm going to stay here, so I may as well just distract uh, one of their people down here. Maybe they'll kill him eventually. It's hard to take middle in a prolonged fight. I mean, they get points this entire time that that's blue. You have to wipe them in order to take it back. So even if you're going to lose the fight, if you take it first, you can gain quite a few points. Just hold it on as long as you can. Where the fuck is this guy been? I mean, I figured he'd been up there that whole time, but he keeps getting killed with the same white line. I mean, Jesus, man, jump down. I could tank this white line the entire scenario. Just delete him from participating. They fucking ran off without camping mid. We had him pushed out. That might do it. I mean, not camping mid could be the difference between winning and losing this one. I ran away. He's dead. You can't run from your healers and expect to live, buddy. They come up behind me, maybe. Alright, so I probably should have just ignored DPS and this guy. I detonned him from the start and just kept healing. But now I'm stuck down here. He's getting healed. Yeah, so I fucked up thinking he wasn't going to get any heals. I could just take him out quick. Deton from the start this time. Oh, sorry, buddy. I mean, had that Magus been down by me from the start, this guy would be dead by now. Wit middle probably would have been wiped ten times over.
fucking pizza. Team's too worried about backdoor capping that they fucking let them have middle the whole time. And then even when we wiped it, they fucking run off before capping it like a bunch of morons. Oh, I got him there at the end. Now, I couldn't tell if that guy was guarded by the Black Orc or not. I hope he was. All right, let's see. Nothing till level nine. We can go by the level nine armor right now. So as you close in on level nine, you want to go to a chapter four and buy the white armor. No, you might be able to find it in the auction house. Keeper as well, and I really should fly there, check, and then go to chapter 9, but for the reason I have 12 gold on me, or 11 gold, uh, I'm just going to go over here and buy it. If it was cheaper on the auction house, it is what it is. But you could save some money, spend a little time, check the auction house first. People don't always sell the level 9 white stuff. Um, I did farm a little bit of it when I was just AoE guys, uh, AoE and guys in IC. But what I want to buy is uh, boots, gloves, helm. I think helm, the first one you can buy uh, from a merchant, anyways, is the level 9 white. You could also go to IC and search for Gale Runner, which is the prefix for level 9 greens. But even the Gale Runner green helm is not going to have near the resist of the white helm. And it doesn't have a talisman slot, so... Technically, I think the White Helm is probably better. Yeah, so this is the first Helm you can buy for 17 gold. We want the boots, we want the gloves. We're not going to use the set. We're just going to do this. We're going to put all green level 8 talismans, which are very cheap. On the auction house, I think uh, I think you can get like that's a twelve. I think you can get like eight of them for a gold, which is five scenario wins. Or we have a little PVE and selling junk. So now we got look, we got our whole set of level nine white gear to put on. And when I go to IC, which I think there's a flank guy right here. And turn in these quests. I think I'll hit it. Sorry, we got some other abilities I don't really give a shit about. Like, this didn't work for the longest time. I have no idea if it works yet. Um, I can't think of the next good ability that we get. That I need to be excited about here. I know, I'm at 52%. Okay, I'm not close, but maybe... There we go. Four turn-ins, half a level. Cloaks are expensive in Tier 1. If you have any kind of AoE character, you can kill 30 guys at a time over here. And like 15 here. And um, you just go back and forth. You'll get a cloak after like 10 minutes of farming. See if level 8 ones are... Anyone selling them super cheap? They don't know what to list them for, because there's none listed. Yeah, there's none listed, so they have no idea, like, what they're worth. Like, I'm not paying 3 for one of those. So if we go Smith, level 8. Let's see what they're... 
nine of them for two gold. That's all you need. But I need a toughness one for my staff. And at level 10, I'll be able to use the PvP staff. Um, and I want to put two talismans in there as well. I was hoping there'd be a level 8 smith. Or armor, rather. Yeah, it's too expensive for level 4. So let's go. I don't know what it's called. I know that's the blue. We want a level 8. None. So another thing you can do is go miscellaneous. But this is only going to return so many results. It's not going to show you everything that's available. Defender. That's what I want for my <clears throat> level 10 staff I'm about to get. See if anyone's selling them for this low level. Look, the level, the low level one is actually more expensive because um, it's, it's more rare. So I'll probably go armor toughness in my level ten staff, unless there's a and yeah, none of these other ones. Maybe if we go rare. Look, ballistics is cheap if you roll a squiggy. Uh, spirit resistant. I don't care about. I get so much from my armor as it is. And it's capped. I Maybe mean, it was corporal resistant. Think about it. Or corporeal, rather. Um, yeah, we're just going to go with... Oh, maybe wounds. No, four gold. Fuck that. All right. So we're going to go with um, toughness and armor in my level 10 RBR staff. And then in my level 5 staff, until I get... I will use this five silver toughness thing. All right, so we got we got good stats for tier one. No, I was doing DPS in that scenario. And I don't spec anything into it. You can still do decent damage without um dumping everything into intelligence. It will if you dumped all your stuff full intelligence. You're gonna get like a twenty thirty percent increase on your damage, but it's not gonna be like a two hundred percent increase. Uh, not in tier one. It might lower the disrupt rate that you get. But at this point, with level nine, we've got all our all our um, slots filled out. Who except a belt? Let's buy a belt. I think I got a shitty belt on. Yeah, it's a trash belt. Let's get a decent belt. I think you get one at level eight. So here we go. There's a wounds intelligence or willpower wounds. Well, I was saying, willpower's very useless, and I am doing a little bit of damage, so let's get the intelligence one. There's even a Gale Runner one I probably could have searched for and um, picked up if it was available. It probably had willpower on it, though. So, <clears throat> uh, we got all our slots. At level 10, we're going to, um, I guess I can buy it now, but from the scenarios, I'm getting emblems. I'm getting quite a few. We're going to get this staff. We want healing. We can even set it up now. Let's put that armor in. Put that toughness in. All right, we got something to look forward to there. For a good staff. I've been really slacking on my growing. Yeah, look at that. Garbage. Um, for the length I've been playing, I should be like 25 by now. But talking is distracting me from... I mean, in the middle of a fight, you can go down your click. You die and respawn. You can click them quick. But um, I also probably got a tactic in there that I never even equipped. I thought these things auto-equipped. I don't even know when I got these. Um, auto detent that would have been nice to have at some point. I mean, I haven't been dying, so it wouldn't have changed too much. Sometimes they do auto-equip. Like, when you get them, I think they drop them on your bar, but maybe only if you're out of combat. and you Like, if you're turning a quest to level, and then you get the ability, maybe it adds it. I don't really know. Because sometimes it seems to put it on your bar for you, and sometimes it doesn't. The other thing we're going to get here um, while we're at it is we're going to go to the emblem guy. And I got... 53 of those so i don't plan on buying this armor so i'm gonna get potions 
inst and these are on a different cooldown than these other ones. The math was off there for a sec. So we're, we're gonna we have instant heal, heal over time, bubble, one second heal, hot, big heal. I mean, we're pretty unkillable. And then we, we did get this ability, which is a one second, a um, little bit less DPS, 10% lower than a brain buster, but it casts twice as fast, uh, direct damage. So I like that ability quite a bit more than this one for finishing guys off, at least. Like when I had a couple kills there where the guy was 15% health, my beam was down on cooldown. It would have been nice. I could probably get a big wog off on them before they're out of range. If you start casting it and they're in range and they run out of range, it will finish casting because it's only one second. But uh, I'm going to cut it here and make a couple phone calls. We'll come back, do some more scenarios. Hopefully they're still popping nonstop. We'll be an unkillable little shaman healer and uh, we'll keep this guy going. Thanks.